How's it going guys? Today we're checking out the top 10 lenses for the Canon 90D. The link to all these lenses is down in the top of the description. All right, let's start with number 10. It's the Canon EFS 18 to 135 f 3.5-5.6 image stabilized USM lens. This guy is coming in at a whopping $599. However, you can find some used and refurbished versions of this lens for a little bit cheaper. This lens provides a super wide zoom range, so you can go from 18, which is very wide, to 135, which is a nice telephoto. It is variable aperture, which means as you zoom in, the aperture gets a little bit smaller. However, if you're in like the aperture priority or shutter priority modes, the camera actually compensates for that change relatively well. Overall, a saw lens that basically can do it all. Now the next lenses that we're going to be looking at are a little bit more specialized. Coming in at number 9 is the Canon EFS 10-18 f4.5-5.6 image stabilized STM lens. This is much more reasonable at $249. As a matter of fact, I am filming this video on this lens right now. Now 10mm is really really wide and I think I'm actually filming at 12mm right now. And as you can tell, there's relatively little distortion in this video. Now a lot of people think of these ultra wide lenses similar to GoPros, which GoPros are good, however they have a massive fisheye. Now this lens does show some distortion as you get to the edges or if you get really close, things just look a little funky. However, it deals with it very well and it's not super jarring like a normal fisheye. I'm a big fan of this lens. Coming in at number eight is the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 STM lens. This guy is a steal at $99. So this lens does not zoom at all, it is set at 50 millimeters. But with that, you have a very wide aperture of f1.8, which means you have a shallow depth of field and some beautiful bokeh in the background. Construction of this lens is so-so, and also the autofocus for video is eh, okay. If you're interested, Canon actually makes three versions of this 50 millimeter. There's also an f1.4, which I had for a long time and I was a fan of, along with the f1.2, which is $1,000. If you're just getting into film and photography and you want some more bokeh in the background, 99 bucks is a pretty good deal for this lens. Coming in at number seven is the Canon EF 17 to 40 F4 L USM lens. L stands for Canon's top of the line lens. That means it's made of the best glass they have. So 17 to 40 is on the wider end and actually gives you a fair amount of reach in between there. Coming in at $499, what you're really paying for is that higher quality glass. One of the things that I mentioned before on this channel and something that's true with all photography and video is you really wanna invest in high quality glass because your sensor can upgrade, but if you're not using high quality glass, you're diminishing the quality of your video. Coming in at number six is the Rokinon Cine 85mm T1.5. I cannot believe that this guy is only $249. Like, you need to buy this lens right now. So you heard me say T1.5, and it differs from the f-stops in a few ways which we won't get into, but basically f-stop is a calculation of the size versus the lens, and t-stop is the amount of light that's actually going through and hitting the sensor, blah blah blah. T1.5 is very, very wide. Now this is also a prime lens, and I've found 85 is a pretty convenient focal length to shoot with. Rokinon makes several other focal lengths of this lens, including number five, which is the 24mm T1.5, coming in at $599. The reason this is more expensive is because it's a wider lens and it uses more glass and slightly different engineering to use that same wide aperture in a wide lens. Number four is the Rokinon Cine 135mm T2.2. This guy's coming in at $479. While it is a slightly smaller aperture, this has the best bokeh because it is a 135mm lens. Coming in at number three is the Rokinon Cine 50mm T1.5. That is $339. 50mm is a really classic portrait focal length. I mean, at this point, might as well get the full Rokinon bundle, which is coming in at $1,955. Okay, we're down to the final two lenses. Number two is the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 art lens. This guy is $630, but Sigma is known for their very well-built lenses. This guy is solid metal and built to last. It's a very sharp lens, even though it has such a wide aperture. I do have to note that this lens is designed specifically for APS-C size sensors, which if you're using the 90D is perfect, but if you switch over to a full frame sensor, you're gonna run into some problems. Finally, the number one lens is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 art lens. 
At $1,100, it's a pretty expensive lens. I've actually got it mounted on my Canon 1DX Mark II Cinema Rig back here because this does work on full frame cameras. So the reason I put this in here is if you're really forward thinking and you're going to progress and become an even better photographer or filmmaker in the future, you want to buy really nice lenses right now. This is a definitely good lens to buy. And it's going to give you some pretty incredible video on your 90D in the meantime. That lens even has optical image stabilization. So if I had to choose just one lens to shoot everything with, it would be that guy. Once again, the link to all these lenses is down in the description below along with a link to all the gear that I use. With that, thank you for watching, and as always, don't forget to keep it pro.